Welcome to another episode of SOLIDWORKS for Creo Parametric Users. In this video, we're going to take a look at creating four different kinds of drawing views, a model view, projected view, auxiliary view, and a detail view. In a previous video, I showed how to create a drawing from a model. So I've got this drawing with an assembly. Let's start off by creating a model view. In Creo Parametric, this is called a general view. If I go to the model view command, it's going to open up the property manager. I have two models open in another window. I'm going to create a drawing view of my assembly, so I'm going to leave it selected. And so now it prompts me to select a part or assembly from which to create the view, then click next. So I'll click on the next button. And then we get the same essential property manager that was used to start off a brand new drawing. And you can choose if you want to create multiple different drawing views. I'm going to create an ISO view. And for more views, you have trimetric, diametric, or current model view to select from. You can choose the display state. Similarly, up here, if you have multiple different configurations of your model, you could choose which configuration that you want to use. If we scroll down in the property manager, you can change the display style. You could either use the sheet scale or use a custom scale. If you're using a custom scale from the drop down list, you can choose which one that you want to use. I'll use a one to four scale. Then you can choose for the dimension type, whether the dimension should be projected or true. True is the default. And then you can control the quality of the cosmetic thread display. So all this looks good. And so I'm going to position my mouse where I want the view to appear and then left click now we've got the view placed on the drawing. And at this point, I can hit the check mark in order to complete out of the tool. So that is good for my first view. And by the way, you can click and drag on an entity if you want to reposition that view. If you click on the view with the left mouse button, it'll open up the property manager that was used to create it in the first place. Let's check mark in order to get out of there. Let me close my save reminder out of the lower right hand corner. So that is how you can use the model view command. But there are other different ways that you can create the first view for a model or subsequent model views in here. Let me go to a brand new sheet. And in the ribbon, we have a command for creating standard three views front, right and top, I will click on that. This time I'm going to create a drawing view of a different model that looks good. So I will hit the check mark. You'll see that the three views are placed on the drawing sheet. Let's create a, another sheet in here. Just keep everything nicely spaced out. If you go to the insert drop down menu and then the drawing view command, there is a flyout. There's a choice here relative to model. In Creo Parametric, if you create a brand new general view, one of the options is to select a surface and then you can choose whether it faces the front or the bottom or the left or the right of the computer screen. That's the same concept here. You can define the orientation of the new drawing view relative to the model. When I click on it, it's a little different than Creo Parametric. In Creo, it will show you a preview of the view and it'll turn on the display of the datum planes so you can select your various different references. Here it tells us that we can select a planar face of a model in the graphics area of another window. Alternatively, if you hold down the right mouse button, you can choose insert from file and that'll open up a dialog box that you can use to navigate to the different folders on your computer to locate what model you want to use for your drawing view. But I'm going to cancel out of there. I'm going to do as it says. I'm going to change my window. Let's go to the window for this part, and I will select it. And here it opens up the property manager for the relative view. For the first orientation, you can choose what side you want an entity to face. I'll leave the default front, and I will choose this surface to face the front of the screen. And then for the second orientation, rather than right, I want to choose to face the top of the screen, this surface over here. Everything looks good. 
when I hit the check mark, now we're going to go back to the previous drawing. You can see that we have a preview of the view. I can choose where I want it to appear and then left click. Then you have all the other different drop downs that you have for changing the properties of this view. By the way, here we have the scale. We are using the sheet scale. I'm going to hit the check mark to complete out of here. Just want to show you that if you take a look in the bottom right hand corner of the interface, here is where we have a flyout where we can change the sheet scale. So in this case, I could say, hey, rather than having a 1 to 5 scale, I could use a 1 to 2 scale and it adjusts the view. Or I can go to the drop down and say, let's use a user defined view or excuse me, scale for the sheet. I'll change it to 1 to 4 and then click OK and the size of the view updates. For the next option for creating a standalone view on the drawing sheet. If you go to the insert drop down menu once again, oops, insert and then drawing view, another option that you have is a predefined view. And with predefined view, I'll click on the screen where I want this predefined view to be located. This allows you to choose from one of the different standard views. You'll notice right now the view is just showing an empty box. If I go to the insert model drop down menu, I can choose which model that I want to use for this view. I will choose the assembly in this particular case. For giggles, let's use the bottom view. And you can change display style, all the other usual stuff. Let me hit the check mark out of here. There we have a bottom view of the assembly. So those are the different kinds of model views that you can create inside of SOLIDWORKS. Let's now take a look at creating a projection view. So I will go to the projected view command, and then it prompts me to select a drawing view from which to project. I'll select this view. And then if I move out to the right, here I am getting a right view. And then I can move my mouse to the top and create a top view in there. I can continue on. You'll see as I'm moving my mouse around, I'm getting different previews of the kinds of projected views that I can make from here. But I'm just going to create those two different projected views and then hit the check mark so it's located on the drawing. As I showed before, I can grab on an entity in the view in order to drag it and it moves the projected views along with it. I could also grab this other view and then move it in a little bit closer. So that's good for that one. Let me go back to sheet number one using the tab down at the bottom of the screen. For the third kind of view, I'm going to create an auxiliary view. So I'll click on the auxiliary view command and I'm prompted to select a reference edge to continue. So I will select this edge that's located at an angle and you can see that as I move my mouse, it is previewing where the projected view will end up being located. I will left click in order to place it. And you have controls like the display state. Here you can change the letter that is appearing for the arrow and how you want the arrows to appear and whether you're using the parent scale or using a custom scale and so on. But all this looks good, so I will hit the check mark and let's deselect everything. So that way we have an auxiliary view. All right, let's go over to sheet two to show a detailed view. And for the detailed view, let's click on the command. And we're prompted to please sketch a circle to continue view creation. If you do not want a circular profile, please create the profile before selecting the detail view command. So for example, you could end up using some kind of sketch in order to define what the profile should be. By default though, it's a circle. And honestly, I kind of like this a little better than the default in Creo Parametric where you are always sketching a circle. But anyhow, I am going to use the method for creating a circle. Let me just click on here and then I will drag the circle out. If you take a look in the property manager on the left, you have two different ways of defining the circle, either the center and a radius or three points on the circle. 
I will leave the default. Let's drag it about yay big or so. And we get a message that we cannot draw the broken style for the profile, changing snow leader style. That is fine. Let's click the OK button. And now I can left click where I want that detail view to appear. In the property manager for the detail view, there is a drop down list for the circle. You could choose per standard or we change it to broken circle. Now we can see the letter appear in the middle of the circle. There's also an option for with leader and you get a little leader line going to it, but I prefer broken circle. And I will leave the rest of the defaults in here for the detail view and then hit the check mark. So let's deselect everything. That's the way you can create the model views, projection views, auxiliary views, and detail views in SOLIDWORKS.